What you doing, you other magical nerds? I'm the AC, and this is another episode of Magicians. Season 5, episode 9, Cello, Squirrel, Daffodil. Yes, the title is made up of three random words, but I'll get to that in a bit. Oh! I'm so excited because of this episode. Oh, I gotta wait for that. I'll get to that in the end. So, the last we saw in the previous episode, the gang thought they killed the Dark King. Of course, they didn't, and they find that out right away. But, let's see what the other people not familiar are doing. So, Katie and Alice, still wondering about the page that she found. They end up going looking for help, and this leads them back to the library in the Netherlands, where apparently Zelda got the hedge witches together and have been rebuilding the library into something better and pretty much the what comes from these two is they find a book it looks like the page comes from it Al starts getting suspicious something doesn't seem right there's weird glitches in the library that is getting blamed on the hedges just trying to learn magic then eventually Alice does realize something's up she goes uh, it gets all revealed to her by the guy they thought they came to look for, is, and he said, tells her it's some kind of psychic spell that he put on her, and this was the 18th time, and he, she figured out every time, and didn't fall for his trap, and then it, the scene goes away, and turns out Katie and Alice are tied up in a room, and this guy is apparently part of the couple. So, he's still trying to get the page from her, Alice is being a little hesitant I guess you could say until you know after he chops off a few of Alice's fingers then he's like okay next I'll be hurting Katie and then she's like oh okay and then she says she will help well that's where it leads off with that so we'll have to wait to see what happens with that will Katie who look like she's still awake pop up and help was they even really Katie will Alice's fingers be back on? Was they even cut off in the first place? Who knows? We get to see all that later. But, that was just a little part of it. Next part is Penny and Plum. Plum finally pops back up into existence. Apparently she was gone for three weeks, locked in some kind of room, as she says. And Penny decides she needs to actually learn how to control her traveling abilities. So he starts to work with her. And the very first time they try to travel together, they end up going back in time. Back into 1998. And it's weird. They talked about um, her being a Chatwin and how it could be good or bad. Penny's only met two Chatwins, Martin and Jane. So, after traveling through time, maybe it's leaning more towards Jane. Now, if you remember in the books, uh, Plum's supposed to be the granddaughter of Rupert. If I'm remembering that correctly, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, they, may, they don't say anything, or Plum doesn't say anything about that, because apparently she doesn't know. Anyways more about them. They're in 1998. They go to the only person that I can think of that could help, which is Henry Fogg, who a young Henry Green Fogg with hair and all that stuff. Not yet, Dean. Seems a little less down. I mean, this is before he's lived 40 timelines, so, you know, he probably is. He helps him, gives him a, like a little time compass. Um, she uses it again to try to take him back. Goes back even further. Back into the, I'm not going to say that, I was about to say the good old days, but no, back into the very racist days. Back to when um, a so-called, not a ghost necessarily, but Hyman's days. Yes, they run into Hyman, they go back that far. <laughs> and it's just very racist time that you kind of just forget about. But still trying to figure out how to get back. They're having a little more difficulty getting around and figure out what to do this time. But then Penny remembers they can use Simon to blackmail. <laughs> Tell him that re they reveal that he's the one, you know, peeping on girls. Um, they finally realize if um, Plum travels back 
to a time or two a time, uh, depending on something she's holding. Uh, and they're trying to figure out what to do or what to use. They don't have anything from their day, but apparently there's something Penny broke that belonged to Quit in, and apparently breaking something makes it a piece of the, a new item created that day. So they, their plan is to use that. However, Hyman was exposed <laughs> anyways, and uh, they are like, we can't let him get expelled because I'll mess up the timeline because I think it's somehow their fault. And they're like, okay, well, we got to make it to where he still astral projects and then hides his body. And that's exactly what they do. And they're about to hide it. Penny's like, okay, now we got to hide it somewhere where he'll die. And then Plum's like, well, then technically from what I heard, he didn't die. And, you know, he's, she's right. And they only assumed he died. Plum has a watch that will suspend his body in time. They hide it away in a wall. And... The little broken piece Penny found, they used to go back in time and it works and everything's fine. And except for as soon as they get back, they get traveled to the room again. Now, look at the room, it's full of what looks like to be all kinds of various variable stuff. And of course, I think it could be part of the couple. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a big mystery. If it's not, or if the room doesn't belong to the couple, then I don't know what the point is. But that's it for them. Let's move on to who oh, the part I'm really excited about. So, going back to Fillory. Uh, Josh, Tick, and Wrath, Wraith, Wraith, yeah. Even though, I don't know why, Tick hasn't been showing up even though he has family, which I guess is why he doesn't show up, so he doesn't interact with them. Whatever. Anyways, so those three, Josh went to go warn the other two, they're hiding. Uh, Julia and Elliot get captured and jailed, and then... Margo and Finn um, escape back to Earth. Ah, oh, where to start? That that was it with the Josh thing. Ooh, trying to think how the best to describe this without revealing anything too soon, but even though I'm excited, I didn't want to get to it. You know what? We'll just go back and forth. Kind of how the story does. Okay, so. Julia One is much fatter. She is very pregnant, and Elliot, you know, well, I guess can't miss it. Anyway, they talk about that they're going to go on each other. Also, I was wondering, did they make Julia purposely pregnant in this season because at the same time of filming, Stella, Julia's actress, if you didn't know, is also pregnant? It's kind of getting hard, but that would be a weird thing to add in a story. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter that much because that's also another sad announcement I have to get to at the end. Anyways, Dark King comes through and is like, okay, we need your help. Jump back to Margo. Margo and Finn are on Earth. They find some weird dirty person that also came back and is in the apartment. And it turns out to be Christopher Plover. And he has some kind of beetles and stuff that make him say some weird things. He can't talk right. Hence the cello squirrel daffodil. First three things he says. And, you know, Finn knows these bugs. Margo eventually brings in Gordy. Uh, Gordy's like, yeah, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. And then he makes a joke. He's like, yeah, it's like a possession. And then he also talks about how apparently cats are possessed. Oh, who knew? Uh, I guess most people don't own cats. Even though, you know, if you become a cat, more of a cat person, like I used to not be in more, uh, cats are pretty chill. Anyways, that's a distraction. So... Margo pulls out good old sorrow and stabs Plover with it. All the bugs come out of him and Plover can talk. So, going back to Elliot and real quick, apparently the Dark King wants them to help some kind of three person spell. Uh, Julia right away realizes this is a seance because, you know, the Dark King uh, lost someone and they agree to help. Go back to Margo. So, Plover apparently has been fully alive for the past 300 years, has saw everything because, you know, the spell Martin put on him, he lives forever, blah, blah, blah. And the reason he can't talk is because the Dark King did, you know, is the one who put the Beatles there. Oh, man. And then Christopher Plover reveals, he's like, yeah, I know who the 
Dirk King is because I know because I recognized him. And I was right. I was so right. The Dirk King is Rupert Sebastian Chatwin. And I knew it. I knew it the first time I saw the Dark King back in the episode of The Mountain of Ghosts. I knew it right away. It was so obvious. And I mentioned it in at least a couple videos. For some reason, I have a feeling that the Dark King could be Rupert. I don't know how. I don't know how it's possible. But, man, there's so many things. He talks a lot about how his family came... Fillerian were magicians. He's talking a lot about having a brother and coming and mourning him. And, but it doesn't make sense because Rupert's supposed to be dead. But if this season's going to take after the third book, the third book had a lot to do with Rupert. Even though Rupert's dead in the book and it's about his granddaughter Plum, I guess the show could find a way to keep him alive. I mean, the Dark King has already been alive for 300 years. If it's Rupert and he somehow did something, it could make sense. And also, the cloak he puts on has a sword on the back. And if I remember correctly, Rupert has a sword that I'm special to him in the books. Even though, I still think the Dark King... No, it's just a theory, but I think the Dark King could be Rupert Chapman. And... Oh man, it was so obvious. British accent, saying his family uh, was magicians, and then him being gay, just like Rupert. It's just, there were so many clues. I also mentioned little things, but ah, it was so obvious to me, but it didn't make sense how he could live 300 years, apparently, especially since he was supposed to have died in the war, but. Christopher Plummer reveals the whole thing. Uh, whenever uh, Rupert was last in Fillory, Martin put a curse on him that put him to sleep and wherever all these surges happened, it woke him up and, it, and you know, it goes on from there. It was that simple. It was a pretty simple explanation for something that seems could have been very complicated. It wasn't. Um, apparently all the trees are also connected into one tree. That's why I'm talking about only one of those trees doesn't actually let Rupert, as I can start calling him now, doesn't let Rupert be killed. Ah, oh, so excited. <laughs> Anyways, um, they would have to pretty much destroy all of Fillory in order for him to die. So, we'll get to see where that goes. Going back to Elliot, Julia, and Rupert. The seance was to contact Lance. If you go back to season three when they're looking for the key, you get to see Rupert and Lance and how they were their re little relationship was even though if you think about it if Rupert could have found a way back to earth maybe it would be easier I don't know the benefits of being a failure over earth but yeah the seance was to contact Lance and Lance takes over Elliot's body and they talk and a little reuniting and then Lance goes away Elliot's kind of just out for the count don't know exactly what's going to happen with him but yeah, it, stuff is getting intense. It's getting so intense. I'm so excited. Oh, to see where it goes. But there's only four more episodes, and they have to wrap all this up in only four more episodes. Because, sadly, this is the last season. They announced it a couple days before the premiere of this episode. Uh, season 5 is the last season and I've been trying to deal with it as best as I can. Trying to be as po as positive as I can about it. But this show... Oh, this show, uh, it's... It's, uh, it's been just my favorite thing in these past five years. It, I... Ah... <laughs> I talk about it a lot. I talk about it a lot of people, and the fact that it's going away, it's uh, I'm dealing with it. Um, I'll probably end up making a goodbye video for the series after this series is over. It ends in April. Hopefully, that's a joke. <laughs> but if it's true, expect that goodbye video because I don't want to get into it now. I need four more episodes to. Get over my feelings. But what did you think of this episode? Are you guys excited to see where it goes? As I am, I'm 
super stoked. Stuff is so intense. And now you also get to wonder why the takers? Is Rupert actually so bad? Yeah, we get it. He wants to bring back Lance and it fits into the whole kind of theme of the season because they missed Quentin, they lost Quentin, and now it also deals with another character who's also wanting to bring something back. It fits in so well, it's so well written. But let me know what you think. Did you like the episode? Did you like what I said about it? Like my video too, why not? And go ahead and subscribe to see what else I gotta say for the magicians for the rest of the series. Until that untimely end, I am the AC. Thank you for watching. Bye.